Hey, this is Brendan Allen from Comic-Con.com. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Lamentation, a new uh, miniseries coming out from Cullen Bunn. Double-sized issues, though, so three uh, three issues actually end up being more like six. Comes out the first week of May uh, from Oni Press. Uh, we've got Cullen Bunn with us today. He's working with artist Arjuna Susini. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, please correct me if I didn't. I think you uh, got colorist, it right. All right. Colorist Hillary Jenkins and letterer Simon Boland. Uh, this one says, the uh, Oni Press says, it's a darkly glamorous tale of bone-splintering terror at the intersection of shadow and light, dream and nightmare, life and the grim specter of death himself. Uh, today, we have Cullen Bunn here. Cullen, go ahead. Uh, tell us about the book. Yeah, uh, so Lamentation is, uh, as you said, it's going to be a three-issue series. It's sort of a surreal horror story. It's about a young actress who uh, applies, you know, applies for an audition uh, at this this theater she gets to the theater and it's decrepit and it's de it's decayed it almost looks like it's not open but she goes in anyway um and as soon as she walks in almost as soon as she walk walks in she's given the part so she's like oh thank goodness you're here uh you can start anytime you're ready um which seems maybe great but then uh she quickly finds out that she's unable to leave the theater uh, until the performance is completed and there are events in the theater in the play that are bleeding into reality and reality is bleeding into the play and uh, and she becomes trapped in this sort of uh this this ghastly gothic horror story well i think i called it a, a paranormal hostage situation and you were like yep. yeah yeah that's fair i mean she's she's held she is held hostage along with the entire cast uh, of the of these paranormal voice forces that uh, that are demanding this play be performed. Well, and I think that we have almost a shortage of paranormal stories that take place in the theater because theaters are like this magical place where it's almost a portal between, you know, your life and this other time, this other place, and you're kind of living through these other people that are having experiences. Um, I don't think we get enough uh, paranormal horror, horror. And on the surface, there are some small similarities to phantom but as soon as you get into it and start reading it, you're like no that may have been inspiration but that's not where this is going yeah i, I think phantom is i mean it's hard to do a, a story like this that doesn't have some inspiration from phantom but i also think it's it draws inspiration from uh uh mask of the red death it draws inspiration mm -hmm. in a big way from robert chambers the king in yellow uh so it, it draws from a lot of places, but it, it it really came together a long time ago for me. Uh, I went to a, a show at the fabulous Fox Theater in uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, and the, the Fox is just such a an ornate theater with all this great. It, it first of all, it it you can sense how old it is when you walk in, but it's mm -hmm. got these great statues and 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 you know reliefs on the wall and it's just such an, um, uh, a beautiful place but also a little eerie and creepy and after that show the seeds of this story were kind of planted and it's been with me for a long time until finally i was able to uh to to tell the story that i wanted to tell that's great, that's great. i think every town uh or any city of uh you know a certain size has an old fox theater we have one in bakersfield there's one in los angeles um, and the one in L.A. will shock you because, you know, you you hear these things about the Hollywood Fox and the Hollywood, like these different theaters. And then you see them in person. And you're like, wow, that can't be it. Because from the outside, you know, half of the facade has broken off yeah. and the uh, the lions out front are all crusty from people touching their noses and stuff all day long. Um, so that's I mean, that's that's very relatable. And that's a thing, too. And like I said, when you sit there and if you've ever been to a theater in the dark, you know just how spooky those places are because there's trap doors everywhere and there's shadows everywhere. If they don't light it just right, it doesn't even look like uh, it doesn't look real almost. Right. Yeah. And, and it's fun. This book was fun because I get to, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the 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 world of the play starts bleeding into reality and uh but but even even when we're not in this goth this strange gothic world of the play, the theater itself is is sort of sinister and creepy, especially when they start exploring the back rooms and and wandering the halls, you know, behind the theater. Uh, so I think it's it's a it was a it was a book that I was able to do a lot of different things with within the horror genre because there's a little bit of you know there's there's a lot of supernatural horror to it. 
but there's a little bit of giallo to it. There's a, you know, it's, it's got a lot of different flavors sort of blending together in the book. Well, you also nailed down, you said, um, you know, how the whole thing was set up is that uh, this lady went on an audition and she got the part immediately. And I think that's like the dream of nearly every waiter and waitress in Hollywood right. was just to walk in. But then you also nailed down the dynamics between cast and uh, like the director and the team and things like that, because there's all these weird things, politics that happen behind the scenes. And that really comes through with one of the other actresses wanting to be the lead and, and different things that are happening there. Uh, were you a theater kid in high school? You know, I was not a theater kid. I uh, I don't even think my high school really had a theater department, but I wouldn't have been a theater kid anyway because I'm too painfully shy and I can't uh, I can't be on stage. Uh, but uh, but later in college, again, not a theater kid, but I was friends with a bunch of theater kids, and uh, and uh, I could uh, so I, I picked. It. There were little things I noticed about all of them. That I that have stuck with me, and I was able to draw draw upon when I was uh, writing this. But also, even even outside of the theater, I feel like I could draw. You know, this is the way really any any profession is in in a lot of ways. When someone new uh, new comes in, not just even, not just professions, but any social circle, this is the way it is when someone new uh, joins the mix to some degree. Especially if they join the mix and they are instantly like the bell of the ball type of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I know that, I does, that does. I don't like them. <laughs> that, I mean, it, it, it's abundantly clear with the, uh, the lead that stumbled into it and the girl that's kind of like, Oh, those, those uh, lines aren't that hard anyway. Like what's going on? Like, why is she the lead or whatever? Like it's, that is a dynamic that plays out over and over and over again in high school, in, uh, in, you know, theater from a uh, community theater, when people get together and stuff, like they get these, um, these uh, attachments to roles that, you know, they thought they were going to be, and they got cast as something else, or they think they're better than the lead or whatever. And it, it comes through really well. Right. I've never thought I was better than anyone else. Not ever once, ever, ever. So this was tough for me to write. I never thought I never thought I was more deserving than someone else. Never. You know, I've had private private conversations to the contrary with you, but OK. <laughs> um, let's talk about the format a little bit. Instead of doing six issues, um, you went three double sized issues. Did you just feel that, you know, the chapter stops would have left it in funny spots if you did it one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, you wanted like a longer breath to tell this first part of the story or why three instead of six? You know, it's, it was an interesting, so the, the, the way this book came together was a little interesting. I pitched it originally as a six issue series. Uh, so it was uh, originally six 20 something page issues is what I had planned. And that's how I outlined it. Uh, at some point, Oni came back and, and, you know, this book's been around for a little, I mean, has been in development for a little while. Um, at some point, Oni came back to me and said, hey, we think we want to do this as an original graphic novel instead. So we're just going to do it all in one, you know, one fell swoop. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, I didn't change the way I was writing it. I still wrote it as I still wrote it to my original outline. So mm -hmm. even though it was going to be an uh, be a, a, an original graphic novel, it kind of had stopping points along the way every 20 something pages. Um, and then uh, when we, we started talking about actually bringing it out, uh, only started thinking that we're probably better off from a from a marketing standpoint, they, they just thought it would be better off to do it as a, a monthly series. Now, six issues versus three. I think the decision there is simply it's a weird it's a weird way of comics right now in that once you get to five or six issues, no matter what the series, there are steep drop offs in in pre orders, which can can really hurt a book's profitability. So. They, they decided, let's try it at three and let's do it as double size to make it a little, you know, it'll be a little special. It'll be a little different. Um, but thankfully for me, I didn't have to rewrite anything for that because I had written it as, a, you know, with these stops already along the way.
Well, and it's cool too because the price point, um, you're at that. Uh, I think it's gonna the MSRP is six ninety nine on that, and regular comic books right now are going for uh, three or four dollars. So it's almost like you're uh, getting a double, in double some cases. Yeah. So you're getting. A, I mean, you're getting a lot of story in this uh, in each of these issues. That's really cool. And the other point that you made at the beginning, I didn't want to cut you off, is yeah. um, the difference between writing a graphic novel and writing floppies. Um, you can tell when they've taken a graphic novel and cut it into floppies and you're like, wait a second, that's weird because it just stops. And then the next issue just picks up and they haven't put a little like in the last issue, a little, um, you know, to bring the reader back in or whatever. So it is really cool that um, that you wrote it as chapters and then the chapters were going to be made into a graphic novel. And then it came back to floppies um, yeah, because you I mean don't have that, that weirdness at the end. Yeah, the, the beauty of writing just something for an OGN is you can just write. So if you've got a scene that only needs to be two pages, it's two pages. And, you know, if that's the first chapter, that's the first chapter. Uh, I think, though, for me, I will probably always write to those 22 page stopping points, even if I'm doing something that I think is an OGN. Uh, just in case, just in case we decide to break it up and do it as singles, I don't have to do a lot of major uh, rewriting. Plus, I think it kind of gives you a nice cadence along the way. Right on, right on. All right. So there it is. I think that's the time we have for today. Uh, the book is called Lamentation. It comes out the first week of May from Oni Press. It is $6.99. It's a double-sized issue. Uh, this is Cullen Bunn. Uh, do you have any uh, parting shots for us, Cullen? Yeah, look, I think this is going to be a uh, this going to be a fun book. Um, it's going to be uh, creepy and weird. And uh, it's going to leave you with some questions, uh, but uh, but I think you'll have fun. It, you'll have fun getting to those questions. So uh, I hope you check it out. Right on. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank you.